everyone. Uh, it's been long since we've done one of these videos, so I'm hoping to repair that today by showing you something I've done uh, a couple of weeks ago. That being said, uh, the project is still alive. It's been lying on my floor uh, for uh, for ever since we've uh, stopped making the videos, to my shame. Hopefully that's going to change now. This is the beast. When trying to get it to work again, I've encountered a few problems with this area. It is the um, program counter area. So it is the component which controls what instruction uh, runs next. Let me show you exactly what was happening without shadowing everything. There was a tr there was a transistor here, which uh, basically decides between these two transceivers. What these transceivers say is basically, are we going to run the next instruction, or are we going to jump to some arbitrary uh, address in uh, in memory? Now, I guess the transceiver was burnt or something, uh, but it was uh, basically activating them at the same time. So for uh, for the moment, it's everything is hardwired to the uh, plus one uh, transceiver, so there is no way to do a, a uh, arbitrary jump. <coughs> Another improvement in this area is basically uh, the fact that we got rid of the uh, clock button. Uh, now, the reason why that's important is because the clock button, uh, well, any uh, mechanical component to that matter, is affected by uh, what is called a bounce effect, where the mechanical parts of the component bounce onto each other. Uh, there's really no way for me to show you this because I'm currently holding uh, the camera. But the effect on the CPU is that it would lead it to believe that was it was clocked multiple times on a single button press. So to replace that, we are using this Raspberry Pi here. This is connected to the program counter flip-flop now. So uh, it tells the flip-flop when to store a new, new program counter address, which is displayed directly here. And I'm going to show you in a second how uh, it gets incremented. So what runs on the Raspberry Pi is basically a small script which uses the wiring pi bindings for Node.js. Uh, wiring pi is a small library which does multiple GPIO related things for the Raspberry Pi. This, as you can see, toggles the clock pin every second and a half, giving it a clock period of uh, three seconds to get an idea what the performance of the CPU currently is. It only Ha it only clocks at 0 0.3 hertz. By modern standards, this is a pretty modest CPU, uh, but I'm perfectly perfectly happy with that. Let's have a look at the script running. So, there you go. It informs us that the pin has been has been switched to high and low and we can see here that the program counter LEDs are indicating the changing of the, of the, of the value. The next step in uh, working with on this CPU is basically getting the memory to work. The plan was that we are going to use this EEPROM chip uh, which is going to act like flash memory, but I have decided to uh, just use the Raspberry Pi as uh, some virtual memory uh, to emulate some memory. Now that is going to be uh, a bit tricky because the Raspberry Pi doesn't have enough GPIO pins to read and drive at the same time 16 different bits. Uh, so 
it will either require truncating the addresses or something else. I will have to give that some thought. So that's it for today. Uh, you can find in the video description a link to um, the script um, which currently runs on the Raspberry Pi and some indications of, of how you can get it to run. See you next time.